So, we all know Nintendo completely gutted Mahi Mahi Resort in Splatoon 3. A YouTuber named Cat Loafman made a pretty good video on it. However, I want to focus on a small detail in the map that really, really irks me, and maybe an indication that the map itself was rushed for release. Now please bear with me on this. I present to you... Physics! Or the lack thereof. Uh... Yeah, I don't think that's how rope works, or balloons, or floaties, or any of this right here. Now the reason this is especially interesting and not just a design goof is because in the original stage there were a lot more platforms over here, which the floaties were meant to attach to and act as cover for. In Splatoon 3, whatever AI algorithm they had designed this stage decided to remove all that and thus leaving this singular floaty with nothing to attach itself to and nothing to cover for. Also, side note, I don't know what they did to its design in this game, but it was so much better looking in Splatoon 1. But this pales to what they did to this in what's already the worst map mode combination for this stage. Rainmaker. Rainmaker. <laughs> I don't I don't even have words. Just look at it. I refuse to believe a human being consciously allowed this anywhere besides a beta build of a game. And if they did, they went out of their way to make the stage worse in all regards and making the decoration make less sense because of it. I'm aware this doesn't prove anything. But, I don't know, that just screams unfinished or experimental to me. Not to mention how radically different the stage's layout is between each ranked mode. Like, obviously every stage needs slight tweaks between the mode in order to work, but these are like straight up completely different vague iterations of the map, with the developers trying to test out experimental ideas. Take the tower control layout with this awkward as hell trench that prolapses when the water drops? Like, like, what? What is this? Like, am I crazy for thinking this seems experimental? Then there's Rainmaker and Clamblitz with these unnecessary ramps that were added, which make the stage feel even more cramped, along with making this short, boring straight away to the goal. These layouts, in fact, are so different and generic, they make me thankful for the Splat Zones and Turf War ones, despite how stripped down they are. Because at least they kind of feel like Mahi Mahi, even if it's just a little bit. Now, we actually have evidence that Splatoon 3 was rushed, with aspects such as tricolored turf war being completely unbalanced and unfair, to the point where they made them almost never appear, and even as skipping a Splatfest for the very first time in order to fix them, and weapons like the Ultra Stamp and Slosh Machine being full of bugs. With all of this into consideration, I don't think it's much of a stretch to assume even stages themselves could have possibly been rushed for launch. What I like to believe is that the last minute of development, the decision was made to drastically simplify stages to become more streamlined, with Mahi Mahi being experimented on, with the developers unable to achieve that goal before launch, leaving us with a half-baked remake. We already know something like this happened to an extent, because if you compare old footage of Scorch Gorge and Eeltail Alley from early trailers compared to the final versions, it becomes becomes apparent to how much more linear they became, favoring the philosophy of funneling everyone into a tight mid with minimal alternate routes or flanking options. This philosophy was often the main reason behind criticism towards Splatoon 2 stage design, and while it isn't the worst thing in the world, it still leaves a lot to be desired, especially when it modifies old beloved stages this substantially. I'm hopeful that in the future, the stage will get a massive rework. Though, if it does, my fear knowing Nintendo is that it will differ even further from the original stage design, rather than reverting somewhat back to what wasn't broken before. Now, I'm aware I just made a huge deal in conspiracy theory out of what could be perceived as a simple little oversight basically no one cares about, along with a few questionable design decisions. Listen. I deeply care about Splatoon, and I want it to be as great as it possibly can. This series holds a uniquely special place in my heart, as silly as it may sound. So when I see things like this, and 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 this I can't help but be critical, even if it doesn't really matter to the average person or in the long run. What do you guys think? Am I blowing things way out of proportion? Am I making a gigantic ligament tearing stretch? Or do you think there's any weight to my theory? Because look at me in the eyes and tell me this is a finished product. Do you have faith in Nintendo restoring the stage to its former glory? Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.
stay tuned.